Welcome back, everyone, to the November 2019 1v1 tournament. We are into the Silver Tiebreakers. In the semifinals of the Silver Tiebreakers, we'll be watching Kingstead and Izzer ride, and then whoever does the finals and possibly the other semis if Kingstead and Izzer ride doesn't take very long. Because... Well, I mean... it. These matches have been really short, honestly. <laughs> So yeah, Kingston is a ride. Grudge match from round one. Getting back to that. Honestly, I thought it was going to be the first place tiebreaker between the two of them. But there we go. We have a second place tiebreaker. Not something I've ever experienced before in a tournament. Gonna be honest. But it's definitely an interesting novel experience. So yeah, with that we have... Last stage of the tournament. It's like I said before, normally these tournaments go like two or like Swiss into small, like two or three person tiebreaker or bracket tiebreaker or something, but nope, it's a four way tie for second place as opposed to a tie for first place. So moving into the match, we have random crags, which is, of course, random and craggy. I'm not really sure what the motivation is for using a random map for this round, but there we go. It's random, and it's craggy. Yay. Anyway. And yes, I am gratuitously showing off the depth of field effect, because I like to do that. I think I might have made it a bit too aggressive in the last update. Eh, it's probably fine. We This is a weird little thing here. Just a ridge. And the center is kind of there. Okay, so this is going to be a very... This is likely we're going to get spiders. I'm, I'm guessing spiders. No, shields. Shields for Izzer ride. Kingstead going for Cloaky. I guess they decided, you know what? It's fine. It'll work well enough. I don't know if this map is guaranteed to have bot pathable crags, but it looks like other than these big cliffs here, yeah, they are in fact bot pathable. So, cool choice. That makes sense. This map's kind of pretty, though. It's entirely auto-generated texture based on the slope, but that works pretty well, actually. Although, unfortunately, the detail texture is a little bit repetitive, but I need to fix that, and actually this map would look really nice. Hmm. Well, there's an idea. Anyhow, Kingstad going in for a very, very rapid assault. Very rapid expansion. Not expansion. Very rapid harassment. Well, is arrived focusing primarily on building up as quickly as possible. Now, to be fair, this is a 12 by 12 map, so it's a little bit... I think it's 12 by 12. It's not, not like a 14 by 14 at least. What the heck is this map? How do I... Okay, I can't remember what I had for... There it is. 12 by 12. Okay. It's just 12 by 12 is really big, especially when you're dealing with bots, especially with a lot of these hills all over the place. Not a whole lot of aggression coming in the beginning. I mean, King said they're clearly trying to find somewhere their glaives can go to actually get somewhere to deal some damage, but doesn't seem likely right off the bat. And Izrite has a lot of room to maneuver around here, so... And not a whole lot they need to defend. King Stead's... I'm not sure really why they're trying to be so aggressive, to be perfectly honest. Might as well just start building up the back lines and get all that stuff set up and make it all look good. Still, Kingstad is deciding they want to at least prevent Izrai from expanding any much, as much as they can, which is fair. They themselves are expanding quite a bit, so Kingstad certainly not worried too much about being harassed on their own. They're just more worried about seeing what they can do to stop Izrai from expanding, and they're indeed doing a fair bit. As Kingstad... Oh, really? Audrey's going to Ronin. Risky move, considering how many bandits there are on the map, but looks like that is the move to be on for. I'm actually a little surprised we aren't seeing any reavers. If we're going to be going for heavier later or mid-game units, like non-raider units, I really am surprised we aren't seeing reavers. But then again, Ronin are going to be quite effective at getting rid of the expansions that have been built up. I just, I'm really curious about the motivation here. Still, Kingstad with enough 
I'm an army to start getting rid of some of the bandits, but he's a ride with enough of an economy that it probably don't care. Now, that being said, King said, I think, yeah, they know, they either know or are soon going to find out where Izzerite has really set up their economy. And yeah, send a few Ronin over there, and it's going to be over. Actually, the Ronin Glaive army here, Kingstead, Kingstead's kind of scary. Gotta be honest, Kingstead's being really scary right now. Izzerite focusing primarily on building up an economy with their economy, getting a lot of wind generators up. But... Kingstad, that's a bit of a weakness on their part. They haven't actually done that themselves, so they're very close to e-stalling. They're getting that sorted, but they are still very dangerously close to e-stalling. Although looking at the build, they're probably they're fine in terms of what they're actually making. Still, I'm kind of surprised they haven't just gone in and attacked here. I mean, the commander, not really a threat to all these Ronin. same time, it looks like Kingstad's much more focused on making sure that Ezerite simply cannot expand. Yeah, They're doing a relatively decent job of that. They are harassing expansions as they come. They're managing to defend where harassment comes in. So Kingstad at least maintaining a fairly solid base. While pushing forward, while setting up on the choke points. And there's the assault with the Ronin coming in here to start taking out those Lotuses. And there they go, taking full advantage of the fact that we are on a hill right now. So yeah, that's that's doing them a really good service. So yeah, the Ronin should be able to take out that no problem. Take out one of the metal extractors. Ezerite's commander, are they going to jump in? I would not recommend jumping. I mean, they're, they're walking. They want to get in there, but the Ronin do have the advantage in terms of actual range. At the same time, Kingstad is not letting anything through. And there's Ezerite going for the jump. They want to go for the center of the map. And they are actually going to manage to take, get a Lotus set up. Or start to. I think the... No, the Ronin are going to take it out before it's done. Or just as it finishes. Ooh, it does take out a Ronin for free, though. So Ezerite's commander still under some threat. Still can jump, though. They actually managed to get the jump back in time by the time the Ronin start dealing damage. And at the same time, that is a dead convict over to the... Or Chandra over to the south side of the map. Putting Kingstown in an awkward position. They've opened up the southeast, or the southeast has been opened up. The center is actually going to open up. Ezerite right is coming on there, but now Kingstead with the Reaver Ronin combo, looking to push back Ezerite's commander. What do they have? Nothing. They just upgraded for the HP. Oh, and light particle beam. Actually, good choice. I like the use of the light particle beam. It's actually going to make it. Oh, that jump too. Although the Reaver now in a great position to take out Israelite's commander, the Ronin are not doing too badly against the bandits as well, but unfortunately that Reaver simply does not last long enough. And that opens everything up. A couple of slings coming in to try to take out the bandits, but yeah, that does not go well. Glaive to try to help assist with that, but again, this is not really the best option. The best option is, of course, Reavers, which are not in queue. But they probably will be. I think Kingstead... Do they queue? How do they queue? I think when they queue stuff, yeah, they're, they don't have repeat built on. So they queue stuff as they need it. Still, Kingstad is a bit ahead economically. They're managing to harass. They actually managed to expand quite a bit into Izzerite's territory. If this bandit were to be killed, that would open up everything to southeast and really help Kingstad to build up. Though, admittedly, well, Izzerite's getting a fair bit of threat in the center, but... Just glaives come in in the right timing. Like, it's a matter of timing, a matter of positioning. If the glaives come in, get rid of the bandits after the outlaw has been taken care of by the slings and ronin, then it might work. Same time, that. Ooh, that bandit managing to micro itself nicely. Good retreat micro coming in there from Izzerud. Good positioning in the first place for actually making that work. But now the outlaw. And now the outlaw dies to a ronin that is just hanging out. Unfortunately, because that bandit is alive, the expansion attempt is once again thwarted, leaving Kingstad only with the western side of the map, and that is getting pretty heavily assaulted. Like, Kingstad's commander is going to have a lot to deal with in about two seconds. Although it is upgraded to the point of being very close to getting the special weapon. So Kingstad apparently does actually to upgrade their commander with no modules, just to get them to the special weapon at level 4. So we should be seeing something probably Disruptor Bomb. But now, Kingstead again, they are still being pushed back. They have 
Are they finally getting rid of that band? They finally get rid of the band, opening up the southeast to expand. So Kingstack can take that. While at the same time, the outlaw was destroyed. So Izurai doesn't really have a whole lot in the center. And Kingstead, their commander should be upgraded. When's it going to be upgraded? It is now upgraded. There it is. Now upgraded. It has a disruptor bomb, as expected. And a bit more HP. But mostly a disruptor bomb. Same time, northeast side of the map, a bunch of glaives coming in here, taking out a couple of lotuses. And then from there, should be able to take out a... Well, take out the entire expansion, really. Wiping out everything. So with that, Izzeride is pretty well... I was going to say pretty well hooped. I was going to say pretty well hooped, but at the same time, they've managed to attack pretty nicely over the south side of the map as well. King's Dead, their commander is heavily damaged. They need to get that repaired first before trying to do anything. And that should be... There's the Disruptor Bomb coming in on top of the jump! And it... Ugh, it's still very risky. Good dodge of coming in there from the commander, though. Very, very careful micro. That opens everything up, though. I mean, the rogues are just slowed, not able to deal enough damage, allowing the glaives to get in, no problem. And that wipes out the entire pack of rogues. Kingstad breaks open the western side of the map. The center of the map, however, a little bit less opened up. I mean, we have... We have the Locusts coming in here, and that's something. I mean, the Reavers are something going to try. But the Locusts don't care about the Reavers. Not going to try to fight the Reavers. That would be foolish. That would be suicide. Trying to go for the Glaze, but that's not going to work out either. Should Reaver over there as well to help protect, get rid of the Bandits, and ultimately get rid of the Locusts as well. King's Dead with a 10 metal per second advantage, allowing them to do this with pretty well, pretty well with impunity. Same time, though, the south side of the map is starting to get taken out, and that is... Just about it, I think, for Israel. They're going for basically one last shot. Loke is going to the south side of the map alongside Fallon Thug Outlaw. But that's alongside Kingstad going to the north. And we've seen we've seen earlier base trades. Now Kingstad had did lose the last base trade on Thornford. And I'm not gonna lie, this position is not especially great for them. But at the same time, the Reavers are here. So the Locusts can't do much. The Felon's really the only threat. And there are Ronin to help deal with that. But yeah, actually the Solar Collectors are really going to deal with that. Because the Felon's going to go for the Solar Collectors. Burn out all of its shields, taking out the solar, the high HP Solar Collectors. And then burn out all the shields of everything else. Allowing the Reavers and Ronin to get in, as we're seeing right now, without any real threat. On top of that, the Gremlins just, why not, come in here and help deal with the Locusts a little bit more when the Reavers are distracted. But there's the Reavers, showing what they can do, taking out all of the Locusts. And that's forcing his ride back. While at the same time, over the north side of the map, Kingstead is just about right. Yeah, there it is. There's the shot. There's the final assault. The five Ronin and a dozen bandits against a bunch of Reavers. Counters the bandits. And the slings. Counters the Ronin. Sorry, the rogues. And the Ronin are just there to help out support. And over the south, we have yeah, the felons forced back. Everything forced to retreat. Kingstead able to rebuild no problem. Reclaim everything no problem. Use most of that economy, or most of that metal as well. I mean, the only thing is, Israelite does have a fairly strong defensive force, and something directly countering the rogues. I mean, a good dozen glaives would do the trick. Or, as we're seeing right now, an imp is actually being built out. That would... That might work. Kind of depends on the positioning. In fact, it might end up causing problems here with the outlaw, and it is going to, in fact... Uh, oh, never mind. It works! It works! Gets rid of the outlaw, too! I didn't realize there was a nerf there, but I guess there is. The outlaw just didn't quite manage to kill that imp in time. And now, with that all set up, that opens up everything. Kingstack can easily walk right into Izzeride's base. As Izzeride going in for the assault, the Reavers manage to get a bit of a positional advantage on the rogues, nullifying the rogues' range advantage, wiping out a couple of them. But the main story is, of course, the forces coming in from the bottom, the glaives, Ronin, all being set out as a bit of a flanking force. Nothing is defending the eastern side of Izzeride's base except for one Lotus. So, these forces are essentially just being distracted by Kingstad's western assault. Opening up the eastern assault means that center looks like it might be going for center assault first. But yeah, this is this is the key thing. These glaives, they can just attack wherever they want. Or maybe not, because they apparently don't want to attack much. And at the same time, the center just destroy that because it's a safe move. Izzerai does have this expansion to the center. You can just take care of four metal per second and worry less about Izzerai possibly rebuilding by taking that out and closing out the territory control. Otherwise, Izzerai has a bit of a 
position to then attack the rest of your bases from if they get if they win a fight. So Kingstad playing it safe, I really appreciate that. Right, that is a smart play. Now with that set up, Kingstead has nothing to really worry about. They can just start taking all these rogues, taking all the all the outlaws, just really going for a final assault. And they have the ticks as well, oh, the imps as well, but the imps have to be careful. Have to be very careful with the imps. We are seeing actually the retreat allowing the imps to come in and not get killed in the process. And is right with the imps throws in the towel, realizing there's no way for them to get back in this. And that is it. Kingstead takes it. Fairly even game on a fairly a fairly nice map for a randomly generated map, to be perfectly honest. That was that was quite cool. So Kingstead taking it, going to the tiebreak finals. And Israide getting knocked out. So we have that. And the other match is still ongoing, apparently. Well, let's go check that out. Also on random crags, but a different random crags. Because, you know, it's random, so every map is different. Yeah. All right. So, how did this random Craig's random out? Let's see. Oh, it's also low the texture. Crap. All right. I actually look at the random out east west, interestingly enough. And it looks like we have again? Glacier? No, Glacier says hovercraft, apparently. Or tanks, sorry. Gah! Yeah, tanks versus Cloaky. Interesting choice. Unfortunately, it's hard to see exactly what's going on as the texture's being loaded, but once that's done, we'll be done. It's... As I mentioned before, tanks kind of apparently have an advantage on Cloaky, but I think Catastrophe is just taking too much of the map for it to matter. I mean, tanks do need a lot of economy, and Catastrophe basically has an entire surround on Dyth. So, while Dyth has the center, Catastrophe's, Catastrophe has every other side of the map to their name. Center having been destroyed, that opens everything up. I mean, Dice Commander's still surprisingly alive despite all that. But even with that, Dice will probably not be holding on to that commander for too long. As it is getting surrounded and does get taken out. And as we, right as we load in, Catastrophe takes the game. And that is that. On a map that actually was kind of flat, come to think of it. Too bad we didn't get to see the texture. Alright, well that was the semifinals of the silver tiebreaker. So I'm moving on to the silver tiebreaker finals. And I guess I might as well just stay here and just chat with y'all as we wait for the silver tiebreaker finals because I don't really feel like having another break and having to split this into two videos. And no, there's no third place match because the loser of the finals is third. So whoever wins the finals gets second place. Whoever loses the finals gets third place. That's how it works. Hence the lack of the third place match. Because that would actually be a fourth place match, and we're only worried about the top three. So yeah, that is... Oh. Apparently, I've got the wrong bracket. Wait, what? That's ah, a Swiss. Never mind. Why is the tiebreak thing not working? What the heck? Are we doing things? No. All right, so King Kingstead and Catastrophe are in the finals, despite the thing not showing it. And... Not sure what map we're on. Oh, Dark Side Remake. Sorry, that's not the, that popped up automatically. That'd be a hell of a finals map. Right, so...
kind of would like the bracket to be updated. Sometimes I kind of wish that I would be given like admin privileges in this, but okay, that's fine. Random crags again. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, it's fun once in a while, but. Oh, okay, chat. Thanks, Gozi, for the appreciation. I'm glad you appreciate my steams. So we have one last match on Random Crags. Kingstad and Catastrophe fighting for second place. Well, get this going. Yeah, we're, we are starting pretty soon. Now, one thing about Random Crags, of course, is that every map is different. But the last one was actually... I, I did like that one. The, the one that Kingstad and Israel were playing on. That was really nice. I agree that that could be its own map. Like, find the random seed for that and just export the height map. Ah, it's only... Like, I don't know. I've been... I've been meaning to kind of get back into map making. I just don't know when. Like, it's something I love doing. But it's something I haven't really had a chance to do. And the tool set is not great. Springboard is... Springboard's good. It's just a little incomplete. Although it seemed to be. Last time I checked. It might actually have gotten more complete in the meantime. But it's just... I don't really have a huge amount of time to invest. Oh, actually, I could. It's just one of those things where it's like, I feel like I have all these other things I need to do, and so I don't end up doing it. And it sucks, because I really enjoyed making maps. But for the tools... All right, what do we have here? Well, the Kings, I got a bit of their wish. There's a lot of water in the center of the map. Deep water? It's not deep water, though. No, it's kind of deep. It's not too bad for depth. I don't know what the swap happened with them. I think like seven or something is. It looks from the from just a casual glance, it looks swap passable. Not sure. I've never seen a giant lake in the middle of a map like this before. Actually, there's a lot of. This is basically a randomly generated Dune Patrol. I am not joking. This is essentially the same design as Dune Patrol, just randomly generated. All right. That's that's cool. And I guess if you like the, I mean, if you if you're the kind of person who likes the way that say Age of Empires works, where you have random maps all the time, then yeah, Random Crags is. Not bad. Alright, well... Game begins. Kingstad going for Shieldbot Factory, and it looks like Catastrophe going for the Cloaky Factory, because Cloaky and Shield are safe options here. Although, man, it would have been cool to see Ampbots. I mean, again, I don't think that's necessary. I am curious. Let's find out. It isn't, apparently. Or, no, it is. No, no, no. There's a lot of purple. There's a lot of purple. Amphbots would have been useful. Oh, well. So it goes. I mean, this is a fairly large map. It could end up expanding to the point that you actually get a second factory and something takes advantage of the lake. It's just no one started out that way. So that's... Clearly not happening. So yeah, this is actually a map. This setup could end up going farther with the game. Like, we could actually have a longer game just because of the fact they have to go around the center. And, I don't know. I mean, because this is set up the way it is, I mean, Rackman's pointing out that it might become this big pork game. Yeah, it could very well become a pork fest. Just because they're, this center is completely closed off. 
that might be that might become a problem. But at the same time, it's not it's hard to tell, but just because the size of the map means that we can't really tell how this is gonna play out for the first couple minutes. As the players just jockey for position, start getting their metal extractors. And there aren't a lot of metal extractors on this map. That is one thing about random crags, it does seem to generate relatively famine maps. And I don't... I don't know. I feel like for a map like this, it could use about 30% more metal extractors. Like 20-30% more. Not a huge amount more. Just a few more. Like maybe some over here. Remember, and maybe fill out a little bit of the top. But it's... Yeah, it's not too terrible for the size. It's just a little bit... It's just a bit, bit too sparse. I think 20-30% more metal extractors or higher metal extractor density would do the trick. And actually, ooh, Kingstad's commander, I don't know. That Lotus, actually, that Lotus is going to save their life. Let's say, I don't know, that's a lot of glaze, but that Lotus comes in there and saves the day. Eight glaze would have been enough to kill all the commander, though. Without that Lotus, and actually, with Catastrophe's commander coming in here, that might still be enough, but I don't think we're seeing Catastrophe try to go for that. No, they're going to see the south side of the map and possibly go to the north side of the map. I mean, they're going to at least stop Kingstad from building or setting up all these shield bots, all these bandits. So Catastrophe can at least expand over to the north side of the map. I don't know. Catastrophe is really got on kind of a weaker start here. Kingstad just feels like they're not really going to have a hard time. I mean, Catastrophe's got this slight army advantage over the north side of the map, but otherwise Kingstad is doing fine. Like, Kingstad's economy is doing well. Okay, their energy's not doing well. They're e-stalling, but otherwise they're doing well. They're probably going to get some energy fairly soon. On a map like this, you could actually build a lot of wind generators, which is exactly what's being done, and that's, yeah, 0.5 to 215. As I was saying earlier, that's a good point to go for wind generators. Not pure wind generators. That, I'd say, starts at 0.7. But definitely have wind generators as a key part of your economy. So... Kingstad, I'm really liking their position. Catastrophe, they have a bit of a better position for reclaim should they need it. But their static economy is weaker. People were pointing out in I think, game chat that that Kingstad picked the better direction to go for expansion. And I agree. Kingstad's definitely got a bit of an easier time getting their economy going. They picked the direction with the higher metal density. Because again, the center of the map, like there's nothing here. This entire section is completely void of metal. It's completely devoid of metal. It just, I kind of don't understand why that's set up the way it is, but yeah, Forces a top versus bottom setup. And that's... I mean, that's something that Kingstad has kind of realized first, and as a result, has taken full advantage of it. And we do have Catastrophe going up for some harassment. That Lotus will take out a Glaive. The Glaives will be able to take out a couple of Metal Extractors before being destroyed themselves. I... I still think Kingstad is just running away with the game. Like, they are absolutely running away with the game. There's nothing I'm going to try to harass this expansion over to the north. Catastrophe seems far more focused on destroying the expansion in the south. Their glaives actually passed the, what was being built up. And they're, they're running into... Are they running into... Glaives, you, that is your funeral! Do not do that! You are going to... You, you died. You died. You, you all died for no good reason. You should be ashamed of yourself. That was a bad way to die. That was an unproductive way to commit suicide. Try harder next time. I mean, as you get recycled into new... Oh, never mind. They got... Never mind. There's no next time. That 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 wreckage field got destroyed. Those glaives are gone. There's nothing left of them. And Catastrophe really doesn't have a whole lot else to work with right now because, well... Quite honestly, they're surrounded on all sides. They, they, this is not top versus bottom. This is bottom right versus... Or bottom... Bo bottom and right versus top left. Catastrophe trying to move in a little bit to the southwest to tr see if they can take out maybe a couple metal extractors or maybe take the commander, but that's not happening. At the same time, the assault force from Kingstad is pretty well uncontested as Convict over here just decides to build up a little more on top of that, take these metal extractors as they go. And there's Catastrophe's commander getting heavily assaulted by bandits and nothing able to stop a Catastrophe's commander actually already jumped. These bandits could have come in and just destroyed it, but I guess they didn't want to. 
At this point, Kingstad is looking at a very easy win. There's there's a bit of an opportunity for catastrophe if they do go in for like small raids here and there, maybe block off this assault. Like come with a few Ronin to take out the assaults or Ronin Reavers. And then take back the top side of the map while defending this middle. But there's bandits coming in, they're gonna try to raid out. There's more bandits coming in the center along with Kingstad's commander, which are for some reason being very threatening. I mean, Kingstad's commander isn't even upgraded, and this is the exact bright units at the counter it, so I'm not really sure what the threat is. I mean, the bandits are a bit more of a threat. As are the rogues. Okay, I say that as the bandits are destroyed by reavers, because that's what they're for. But the rogues at least can deal some damage, get rid of some of the reavers. But Kingstad's commander isn't really much of a threat, so right now I'd say it's almost better, except for the fact that Catastrophe got distracted and decided to move all their forces to help deal with Kingstad's commander, and possibly also the bandits, leaving the entire eastern side open, allowing Kingstad to wipe out everything into the east, further increasing Kingstad's economy lead. I mean, the main thing Kingstad doesn't have right now is caretakers, and they, are, they have 40 metal per second in their factory. They could use another caretaker, but they're doing okay. They're not accessing too much. And Catastrophe are just desperately trying to find some way to defend, and there's no clear way out of this. I mean, again, this force over to the north side of the map is getting slowly chipped away. But the force over to the south... I mean, Catastrophe is able to hold on, so there is that opening. Catastrophe might be able to push back some of this force here, get rid of this entire expansion, and start taking the top side. It's just Kingstad's taking a lot of metal in the meantime. And they're turning that metal into a lot of army in the meantime. And they're turning that army into a very scary territory control force. I mean... Still, Catastrophe is ahead 600 metal by army. But Kingstad's catching up fast. And now Catastrophe's commander heavily threatened. Kingstad's commander forced to retreat, but it may not even matter. Catastrophe's commander basically forced to retreat. The Stinger's providing a little bit of extra pressure, but really it's just... That's the Southwest. That's taking the Southwest fully for, Catast for Kingstad. Stopping Catastrophe from trying to harass. Same time, though, Kingstad finally getting that Northeast threatened... And Catastrophe looks to be able to take it. So finally opening that up and putting Kingstad in a bit of an awkward position. But again, Kingstad ahead of... Well, maybe not ahead of army-wise. That's one thing. Kingstad's way ahead defensively. Not super ahead army-wise. And not doing great on attrition. And they finally lost that top side of the map. But again, there's Kingstad's forces... Still trying to... Still pushing back. Not managing to do much damage. But still pr providing pressure, at the very least. But at the same time, there's flank forces. Bandits coming in. I mean, the Reaver's going to be a problem. That's the one thing. Oh, never mind. There's the Raven coming in to get rid of the Reaver. And that should take everything else out. So, with the Bandits coming in here, the Ronin can't really stop them. The Glaives are not really cost-effective at doing so. And why not send a Raven to take out a Glaive? A bit overkill, but hey, it, if you win, you win. Why not? Kingstead, again, still has twice the economy and basically does not have any threat over to the south side of the map. With the Ravens coming here, the air support is just doing all of the... It's doing that last little bit of work to maintain Kingstad's domination over the top side of the... Or top northeast side of the map. While consistently, if slowly, pushing Catastrophe back on the western side of the map. So Catastrophe really doesn't have all that much to work with right now. They've... Yeah, they're really falling behind, unfortunately, for them. But fortunately for Kingstad... As Kingstad maintaining that lead, pushing it forward, just trying to hunt down Reavers so they can make sure that their glaives or their bandits can actually do their job. Or are they even going for that anymore? No, are there? I think they're just going for metal extractors, maybe, or possibly caretakers, possibly factory. Hard to say. Caretakers, that's it. Catastrophe doesn't even care though. They're throwing in the towel, and Kingstead takes second place. Catastrophe gets first, and of course, Saniac got first place in the first place during the actual Swiss round. So good job, the tiebreaker for silver for second place goes to King's Dead. Well done, you. So yeah, a little bit weird because I can't really show both at the same time. But yeah, so congratulations to Zaniac for getting first place. Congratulations to King's Dead for second place and Catastrophe for third place. And thank you, all of you, for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And... Yeah, so... Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the, And if there's more tournaments. There's usually tournaments every month or so. So if you want to sign up, just keep an eye on the forums. The news posts will come up usually a week or two before the tournament starts. 
and then just sign up. And you can have fun and get on stream and play games. And it's fun. But that is it for me tonight. So until next time, thanks for watching and have a good night, everyone.